Hey there folks and welcome back. In our last lesson, we derived the formula for the equation of the tangent plane to our surface at a given point AB. But why did we do this? I mean, why is the tangent plane important? To answer that question, let's think back to Calc 1 when we were dealing with a tangent line. In our last video, I mentioned that the tangent line plays an important role in approximation. You see, if we can find the tangent line at some point x equals a in the domain, then we can use that line to approximate the values of our function at points nearby. Suppose, for example, that a is equal to 1, and at that point the function is nicely behaved and finding the equation of the tangent line isn't too hard. But the truth is, folks, we're not interested in the value of our function at 1, we're interested in the value of our function over here at 1.3. It could be the case that plugging 1.3 into the function itself leads to a really gross calculation, something we just don't want to do. So maybe we're willing to settle for an approximation. Since the tangent line is still pretty close to the function at 1.3, we can approximate the function's value using the value of the tangent line. So f of 1.3 is approximately equal to l of 1.3, and that's much easier to calculate. Well, the situation in Calc 3 is quite similar. Maybe it's not too hard to find the equation of our tangent plane at this point AB, but we're really interested in the value of our function at some other point nearby, maybe this guy over here. Now, it could be the case that plugging that point into our function just sucks and leads to a really awful computation. So instead, we might be willing to compromise. We can use the value of the tangent plane at this point, which is pretty close to the surface of our graph, as a good approximation. You can see that over here, I've used the notation capital L of X to denote the value of our tangent line at a given point X. We're gonna use a similar notation in Calc 3. The value of the tangent plane at a given point XY will be denoted by capital L of XY. Why capital L? Because just like the tangent line in Calc 1, the tangent plane in Calc 3 gives us a linear approximation to the values of our function. All right, folks, let's try an example. In this question, we're trying to estimate the temperature of a pizza. You see, at a point x, y, the temperature in degrees Celsius is exactly equal to the function f, x, y. It's 5x squared times the square root of x squared plus y squared minus 100. We'd like to estimate the temperature of this pizza at the point 2.9, 4.2. Now as a bonus question, what toppings are on this pizza? The answer will be revealed at the end of this video. For now though, I bet you're wondering, Zach, why don't we just plug in this point to the function fxy? There's no need to estimate the temperature, we can get the exact temperature. That's true, you could. But do you really want to plug this ugly point into the function fxy? If you're doing this by hand, that's going to be a horrible calculation. But I'll tell you what won't be so horrible. Using the tangent plane at a nice point nearby to approximate the value of our function at 2.9, 4.2. You can do that entirely without the use of a calculator. And that's what we're going to try. So the first question we want to ask is, at what nice point near 2.9, 4.2 should we be putting our tangent plane? Well, I think the closest point near 2.9, 4.2 that would be nice to work with would be the point 3, 4, right? So why don't we say that L of x, y is going to denote the tangent plane at the point 3, 4. According to our formula from the last video, the equation of this tangent plane is fx of 3, 4 times x minus 3 plus fy at 3, 4 times y minus 4 plus the value of our function at 3, 4. Our idea is that the value of the function at 2.9, 4.2 will be approximately equal to the value of the tangent plane at 2.9, 4.2. So our first job is to find the equation of this tangent plane. Okay, folks, here is our formula for f of x, y once again, and the equation of our tangent plane at the point 3, 4. To find that equation, we're going to need the partial derivatives with respect to x and with respect to y. So why don't we start by differentiating this function with respect to x. To do that, I think we're going to need the product rule. We have x is here times x is here. 
My derivative is partial f by partial x, and it's given by the derivative of the first term, partial by partial x of 5x squared, times the second term, square root of x squared plus y squared, plus the first term, 5x squared, times the derivative of the second term, partial by partial x, of the square root of x squared plus y squared. Of course, this minus 100 is just a constant, so it dies under our derivative. All right, let's differentiate this thing. The derivative of the first term is 10x, and then we have the square root of x squared plus y squared. My next term is 5x squared, and then I have to use the chain rule to take the derivative of this guy. The derivative of the inside with respect to x is 2x. The derivative of the outside function, the square root function, is 1 half times the inside raised to the power of minus 1 half. Okay, and now we can clean this up if we want to. The first term actually looks pretty simple already. 10x times the square root of x squared plus y squared. In the second term, however, we can clean it up by canceling these twos. That leaves us with 5x cubed divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now the partial derivative with respect to y is actually a little bit easier. We don't need the product rule, just the chain rule. Differentiating this expression with respect to y, I get partial f over partial y is equal to 5x squared, I leave that alone. Then I take the derivative of the inside, which is 2y, and then the derivative of the outside, which is 1 half times the inside, x squared plus y squared, raised to the power of minus 1 half. Just like before, we can simplify this expression by canceling some 2's. We're left with 5x squared y divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared. Our last job is to plug in the point 3, 4 to both of these derivatives. Plugging into our first derivative, we find that partial f over partial x at 3, 4 is 10 times 3 times the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, plus 5 times 3 cubed divided by the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. Now, this really isn't as bad as it looks. You see, 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25, and so the square root is 5. That leaves us with 30 times 5 plus, well, the 5 is going to cancel out in the top and bottom, and we're just left with 3 cubed. So that's 150 plus 27, 177. No calculator required. I'll let you do the same sort of calculation for the other partial derivative, but what you should get is partial f over partial y at 3, 4 is equal to 36. Now let's put all the ingredients together and write down the equation of our tangent plane. Okay, we found our partial derivatives at the point 3, 4, and now we're ready to write down the equation of our plane. L of xy, the tangent plane at 3, 4, is given by 177 x minus 3, plus 36 y minus 4, plus the value of our function at 3, 4. We can compute that just by plugging in this point. Now it's doable because 3, 4 is pretty nice. We get 5 times 3 squared times the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared minus 100. Now of course this square root term, just like before, is 5. So this term is 9 times 25, that's 225 minus 100, that gives me 125. So I add 125, and there is our tangent plane. We can now use the tangent plane to approximate the value of our function. f of 2.9, 4.2, is approximately equal to L of 2.9, 4.2. Plugging these points in, we get 177 times 2.9 minus 3, plus 36 times 4.2 minus 4, plus 125. Okay, so that gives us 177 times minus 0 0.1 plus 36 times 0 0.2 plus 125. At this point, it's just cleanup. We get minus 17.7 plus 7.2 plus 125. I'm left with minus 10.5 plus 125. That's 114.5 degrees Celsius. Ooh, it's a hot pizza. Now you might be wondering, how good is this estimate really? How close is it to the true temperature at 2.9, 4.2? Well, if you check the value of the function at this point using a calculator, you'll see that it's very close to 114.62 degrees Celsius. So using our method, which didn't require a calculator at all, we got to within 0.2 degrees Celsius of the true temperature. Pretty incredible, huh? 
Finally, if you're wondering what toppings are on this pizza, it's pepperoni and pineapple. Lots and lots of pineapple.